podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Welcome to the Cardiff Central Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Cardiff Central Podcast. Uh, my name is Dan in the hot seat again. I've switched up my co-host this week. I uh, got rid of Carwin. He's unavailable. He was annoying anyway. So uh, Harley's back from holiday. Harley, how are you? And would you like to apologise to the listeners for taking a holiday? Uh, uh, it's, it's nice being back. It was a great holiday. I do not apologise. <laughs> it was very much needed. My brain was about to explode from uh, doing two podcasts a week for over a year now. <laughs> That's what I was fair enough. I was one week off then is acceptable, but back to it for another 12 months. Uh, and then we've got a second special guest of our Summer of Special Guest podcast, um, a man who uh, started out Pont de coming through the Cardiff uh, Academy, Wales in the 20s, made 111 first team appearances for Cardiff, uh, including a particular one in Bilbao. And went on to play for Cornish Pirates, is now back at Ponty as a player and a coach. Garen Smith, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. No problem at all. It's good to uh, good to catch up with someone who uh, is obviously a favourite at the Ams Park. So eight years, I think you were in the first team. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, looking back on the on the website today, seeing how many seasons I was trying to count back. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit old now. Bodies, bodies <laughs> falling apart. But long well, time. So take us back right to the start. Where where did rugby start for for you as a youngster? Um, so rugby basically for me started. At Ponty, um, I think it was under eights. I think I started that and come through the mini junior section there, um, into the youth and same time uh, jumped in with the Cardiff Blues under sixteens, come through the age grade system and under eighteens, um, and then got taken into the academy, um, as long with that playing with through Ponty youth as well, and then uh, progressed into with a few years in the academy then and with the uh, Ponty first team, bouncing back and four, and then uh, I think it was the twenty fourteen season, um, coming through into the first. You you come through at uh, same time as a, a kind of big group of you from the north of the region. There's so Ethan Lewis, Liam Belcher, Thomas, uh, Jared Evans was in there as well. Sort of something of a golden generation, I guess, coming through the academy. Uh, you had great success at Ponty in that time then as well. What was it like playing with those boys and coming through with them? Yeah, it was great. We um we had a really good uh group of young players who more or less played with each other all the way through um at Ponty age grid uh, level really um as well as linking up with a few of the wrong boys with Belcher and uh, uh Ethan Lewis as well. So when we come, we had a really good under sixteens uh, and under eighteens group of players who were all quite close knit and like you said more or less all progressed through into the academy at the same time really. Um and a lot of a lot of us have picked up professional contracts and stayed in the in the game a long time and other boys have gone to make international honours as well. So as a group of players, there has been like you said, a golden generation really of from that kind of area and that age. Yeah, so you sort of mentioned that you sort of broke through 20, 2014, 2015 season, and then you know, be more severely cemented in the squad the following season. How did you find that transition from sort of Welsh Premiership up to up to uh well we've been Celtic League still then uh, yeah Pro twelve then how um, how did you find that and did 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 it help that you had those, these guys you've been playing with for quite a while as well oh yeah massively like we obviously training every single day and um nothing compares to playing the match the match day at the uh, on the Arms Park and on a, especially when we were playing on the three G going from a heavy old play pitch at Sardis Road and go into a fast track at the artificial is a bit is a bit different. Um but with those group of boys it, it did make the environment a lot easier and gelling with each other. I think we all kind of knew what how each other played and stuff and but obviously we were all still learning and progressing as as young players and um we had a good group of senior players there who kind of helped us along the way as well and showed us uh, showed us the ropes really. Uh, fast forward a little bit then, 2017-18 comes along. Uh, you're sort of pretty much cemented in the first team by then and started weirdly, I think it's fair to say, like it was 
there was some tough results in the first half of that season. I think we lost at home to Zebra, got nil by Sale. Then Danny Wilson announces he's off at the end of the season. Yeah. From that point onwards, then though, second half of the season, it was a total change. What was what was the dressing room and sort of the atmosphere around the club like that season? Um, like you say, it, was, it was start we did have a difficult difficult run. Um, I think the one point in that season which really brought all all the players together is we, we had that trip to South Africa and we had about a 55 hour flight travel journey out there and I think flights got delayed stuck in hotels and I think a lot of the supporters actually arrived in the hotel before us so <laughs> I think it was a bit of a nightmare of a journey that actually brought all the boys together and we actually put quite, quite a few good results together at the end of the season um, and then obviously went on to Winning in, in Bilbao, um, but like yeah, it, all I think to go to go from where we started the season on and end end of the year, I think we couldn't have ended it better. And um, a lot of the boys who who fit, who played in there are still are still playing now. Obviously, have moved on to other clubs and boys still just keep in contact. And no, it's it's something it's great for the club and great for the players. And it, what an unbelievable experience that that was really. Was it uh, like? From the outside, it felt like you know, the second half of that season, everyone was just like super close uh, squad wise, and I think there was a it was a time when there was a really good like connection between the players and supporters as well, and and the coaches. Was it sort of like an end of a, an era kind of feeling, like a one last hit out with with Danny and Jockey moving on? Obviously, Jockey has since come back, yeah. but uh, uh, was yeah, was it was it that sort of like you know we got nothing to lose here, let's just go for it? Yeah, I think so. We like boys or. We, all the players go out every week to put put performance in, and I think I think a couple of results that we started get into the groove, and boys started started getting more confident, and just allowed us to to play our game. The Cardiff used to uh, enjoy playing a fast paced expansive game, especially on the Arms Park. That really does help. And then when you play in front of a crowd, I remember the the semi final when we played Powley. That pack that that was that was unbelievable. That was one of the best experiences on a match day that. I've been at anyway. How close it, how close the supporters are to the to the pitch, um, and the place we bounce into. To be, to be honest, and when that final whistle went, I think it, boys couldn't have been any more happy. And I think that in the change room, we saw all the pictures and stuff afterwards, which are unbelievable memories and all the singing song with Kruger as well. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it was an unbelievable experience and something that I think all the boys will definitely cherish for for the rest of their playing careers and life after rugby. Yeah, absolutely. I I remember that. So that was sort of the sort of seat the season before that season was when I sort of started getting really in, into Cardiff rugby, being more of a starting what there's a lot of well rugby fans do is Team Wales and then picking your region. Um other, obviously Bill Bowers sticks, that was a huge memory for pretty much everyone involved. But um are there any other big key memories of your time in blue and black that stick out? Yeah, I got I got quite a few actually. So obviously that's that Bill Bowers is the is the main one that's as the pinnacle of of why I've done the rugby, um, there's Toulouse when we played out there. Um, I think we, I think we won just at the end. I think we were defending for just outside the twenty two. We managed to get a, a choke tackle right at the end. Uh, with I think it was me and Chingle. I think it was put a choke tackle in and managed to turn the ball over. And that was the end of the game. Um, Montpellier away. I think that was a bit of a daunting one. I think it was me and Jared at 10 and 12. I think I was 20 at the time, I think, and Jared might have been 19. And then you're playing against a big South African forward, basically playing for Montpellier at the time with Duplessis at Ucker. So, yeah, that was a couple of couple of, um, couple of of big memories, uh, but mainly against the French teams as well, really. And, um, and that, especially that uh, power game at, uh, at the Arms Park, that was definitely up there as well. Bill Bow, then obviously you you start on the bench, but you come on come on quite early. He was Owen, was it yeah. Lane got injured? Yeah, Lane went off. I think it was his hand. I think it might have been. I think he might have broke his hand. Um, so I think I I can't really remember off the top of my head now what minute it was, but I think it was just a bit of a panic and just get just get on the field really. To be honest, um, yeah, that that was just. Something I know I can cover wing and play quite a lot of it, but coming in at that position and yeah, it's a bit it's a bit different to when just playing playing at home and you kind of got 
used to <laughs> used to be in the arms back when you got a big big crowd like that in the Bilbao Stadium and yeah, trophies on the line is a bit a bit different different situation. A bit, a bit out of your comfort comfort zone out there. So, but no, nah, that was an unbelievable experience and um something I'll definitely cherish for forever now, really. Um, I think. I think the the major moment of the game, which is sort of like, because I think people sort of gloss over the fact you scored a try and they come back. Yeah, yeah. Like, no one seems to remember that. They just remember the turnover right at the end. But, yeah. But that 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 try. I mean, you've probably scored a couple on on the end of Jared Evans' little chip throughs over over your career. Yeah, Jared Jared's just unbelievable player and the, the, his vision and execution of just those little kicks and be able to pump that ball with those little pa short passes and. Yeah, he's for identifying space. He's 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 right up there. He's disappointing that uh, he hasn't been able to pick up a few more international caps. Um, that'd be a bit biased probably, but yeah, that's uh, but no, nah, that that game, like you say, a lot of people just remember that jack the jackal at the end of the game, and I think like you say, a lot of people have do forget that I did actually score, but it went off of far out is only about off, I think it was two meters on the line to pick the ball up and just put had to put it down, but. I try and tell people it's about fifty meters out. <laughs> I try and forget about the other the other two kicks in the stand as well. So don't worry about that. Well, I, that's what I was going to ask actually, because the the jackal comes from a kick ahead from yourself at the end, yeah. and you have shanked two already. It's fair yeah, to say, yeah. like in the game, when when you've got that opportunity, are you thinking, "Oh, I can't do this again, surely," or is it just sort of it's like natural at that moment think, to just go? Yeah, for I think it. I think it was just a natural, just decision and just just. Just do it. I don't think I didn't really think of the other two, to be honest. Um, I think it, they happened, just moved on. Like you so say, you had um, a couple of experienced players who just kept me going and just said, "Oh, I had to move on next thing, don't worry about next job." So that really, that really did help. Uh, I think I remember speaking to Willis and Ray afterwards and just being like, "Well, they never, they never would have kicked that third one." <laughs> so yeah, it's. I'm looking back and I'm wanting to watch some of the clips back as well. Is how I actually decided to kick that third one, I don't really know, but I'm actually glad I did in the end because we did, did ended up winning the game from it. So and for a chicken to kick that kick that final one under under all that pressure and um, yeah, it shows the, the the character and the player he is as well. Yeah, and a good night after then as well. Like I just I I don't I suppose people sometimes think oh it's just challenge cup is second tier, but. You know, in that moment, that was such a huge achievement for the club, and like for you guys to to win a, a European trophy on that stage, probably something that you uh, you dreamed of growing up. Yeah, massively is for the club and players. I think, like you said, it'd be a rough start of the start of the year, and probably didn't think of anything of targeting maybe going for the cup, winning the cup. Or um, I think we were looking more placement in, within the league, and I think once you. Oh, you get on a good cup run, it's, it starts make getting a buzz about the place, and I think everyone just got really excited. Um, and especially that that evening, that well, that weekend, really, we luckily managed to stay out there for for the final as well for the uh, Champions Cup, and made a good weekend of it. And I think there was a few, definitely a few sore heads and bodies after the, after that. Um, but yeah, the experience and I think it, the weekend that we had together as a, as a group was. It was unbelievable. Um, and it was definitely a few good few characters there that come out on that weekend as well. Uh, so what did I ask? I mean, if you, if you're allowed to say, I know there's some some uh, some some things you just can't you can't say. Yeah, uh, but uh, so who do you, who who sort of went the hardest after that win, and you know who was still who was still uh, drinking uh, the the following week? I don't I don't think he mind me saying this, but I think Nick just put all the boys to bed. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, I think we, you more or less. I think we walked into the hotel and he just sat on his own, just and calling all the youngsters over and just saying, "Right, sit here, get get these down here," and just uh, okay, everyone's passing. But one would go, home, another one would come back, and he'd stay there drinking with them and just speaking about the day and rugby and, and life, basically. So, now nah, that was uh, that was definitely an experience drinking with Nick after that final. <laughs> oh, that's that's just elevated my 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 opinions of Nick. <laughs> Um, to go from a, quite a, a high to a, a bit of a low, then obviously not long after that, COVID comes round and you're out for a bit, and then New Year's Day 
2021, I think it was, wasn't it? Ospreys, you suffered quite a bad knee injury at the Cardiff City Stadium. After being after all the COVID and then coming back from that, how tough was that to go through that injury? Yeah, that that would be that was quite a tough one, really. Um, I'd act well. I hadn't, I'd never really had a nasty injury until until that point. I obviously I had a couple a couple of weeks off here and there through through ankles and odd niggles and stuff, but nothing major with where we need an operation. Um, and to be fair, the support of family friends and physios were was outstanding um but i think i got my head on it pretty quickly and, and just got just got to work to be honest i was in so i did that on the new year's day i think it was two days or three days later i was in having the operation so the um the medical department were outstanding with me uh they really did help and um the snc and the snc with uh campbell as well he was brilliant with me got me back fit and and strong so yeah, that was a bit of a bit of a freak accident, a bit of a freak uh, injury. That was so I, to make sure backs don't go into 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 malls again. That's really <laughs> a, I stay well away from them now. Um, if I if I can to be honest, so yeah, it was somehow I ended up getting stuck in the middle of it, trying to stop the ball going over, add an extra weight, um, and somehow just ended up getting my leg caught at the bottom of uh, at the bottom of the mall and bending in a certain direction that should, it's not used to going in. So. Um, I ended up doing my, I think it was LCL, all the outside my ligaments on my knee, and so they had to stitch them back, and yeah, so a bit painful at the time, but I think uh, it was a bit of a tough one to take. I obviously, I'd had a good couple of running games. I made my, I think it was my, I think I made my hundredth cap. I think that was last season, um, or just before. I think it was Treviso and in, in, at Rodney during COVID. So I think. Um, it was definitely a tough one to take, um, but I think come a lot of change at the end of that season. I think um, we had Dai come in towards um, towards the end of it as well, so that was obviously a bit diff- difficult as well. New coach coming in, um, you had injured, you got to try and work th- twice as hard then to try and prove yourself to to get back into the team and really. And then, so not. Probably would it have been eighteen months or so after that. I think your your time at Cardiff come to an end. Then do you do you kind of trace it back to the injury a bit with the change of coaching, or is it just sort of one of those things where it was it was just the right time for for both parties? Or um, yeah, looking looking back on it, it's probably a lot of factors that probably that come into it. I wouldn't say it was anything to do with in, with my injury. Like I come back, I think I did. I think I played the first game in Hart against Harlequins. I thought I'd done it right for the first game back. And um obviously it takes a bit of time and looking towards the future. I think we had look obviously Max coming through as well. And um Ben as well. You had Ray, you had Willis, so it was good competition within within the club. And obviously I'd been there for I think what well, my eight I think might be my eighth season there at the club as well. So obviously there's natural progressions and uh within the club and um cycles of squads and teams and stuff so i think it might like you say it might have been a, the right time for me to move on uh, but something i did, probably didn't want to do uh, obviously what i did what i did enjoy my time there and loved every minute of playing and training with obviously it makes it easy when you all your friends there as well um but it was definitely a difficult a difficult one because it did actually leave me quite late in, in the season when the decision came so I thought I'd had a run, I'd had a running games and towards the end picked up a play against the uh, Munster Saracens just before the end of the season, um, and then I think I was due to actually start that the that weekend and I ended up um, rupturing my uh, tearing my calf, so I was so I had a grade two with that and then so that set me back then and the decision of having to find another club then at the time of being injured so. Um, Luckily, Cornish Pirates come in, come in for me at the end of the season, and I'm great, really grateful for them for taking taking a chance and having me taking me on while I'm injured as well. So, yeah. So, so next, the, the next question we're going to follow on was uh, so you've led us in brilliantly. Is talking about your season with the Cornish Pirates. Is that uh, so? Was that them approaching you or your agent putting that? And um, how did you find the English Championship differed from the sort of uh, the URC? Um, so that was a bit, bit of both, really. Um, 
So my agent was obviously looking elsewhere to try and find try and find me a club. Um and the Cornish Pirates actually come in and asked about me and so I had a couple of um Zoom chats and a few with them with so luckily we had two of the coaches down there were Welsh as well. So we had um Gavin Cattle and uh Louis Tonkin as well from from who was down in the Scarlets region. Um so I had a couple of good chats to them. Um knew uh two of the boys who were down there with well Arwell who who signed back with Cardiff. Um and Cameron Penny who's back in Newport now. So and without not not knowing at the time that Alex Everett from the RFC was actually signing down there as well. So it was a good group of us in the end actually moved down. Um yeah, so that was that was a strange quick uh changeover. So I literally I think that, that deal was sorted within May end of May and I think it was and then I had to move down for end of June. So trying to up and move down there as quick as possible was a bit difficult, but it got it got it done. Um ended up staying actually living with Arwell and Alex Everett for I think about two months over the over the preseason. Um which was uh, a bit different moving moving from living on your own and going moving in with two boys and, and our world's partner as well. So it uh but yeah the experience down I couldn't I it was um it was really good I didn't I enjoyed the the company and the players and the coaches uh really going well with everyone down there um but the, the, there is a massive difference from between playing in the URC especially the way the card is like to play and the way the Cornish Pirates and the uh the Championship in England actually play so I would definitely say is is a very forward orientated game. Um, which is really confrontational. Um, boys are happy just to run straight at each other and try and, but just try and see who comes off best. There's not much of a playing out the back, tipping and try to run into space. The boys are happy just to try and bash each other and yeah. So it's, it it was very is a lot different. Is really physical. Um, which obviously took it took me a little while to to adapt to and. Getting down, I did. I did pick up a couple, quite a few niggles early on. Um, I think we were all traveling back and forth, and um, I think it's but I think because it's obviously quite secluded down there, so it was about four or five hour tra trek from uh, from Ponty all the way down to down to Penzance, and especially on when you're stuck in traffic in Bristol, is it's not a great journey. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I did it. I enjoyed the, the the group of boys down there, outstanding. Um, and definitely made some friends for life down there. What's the what's the set of a Cornish part? Is it fully professional down there, or so, is it is a mix? Is it? No, so they they're fully professional. Um, so they train out of Penzance. They got the the ground and gym and training facility down there. So I definitely say it's a lot different to to what Cardiff, Cardiff have with the artificial. There's definitely a your old school heavy pitch. They used to the with the scrummaging and driving line outs. That's what that's what they like to do and bring teams down there and um try and strangle them into the corners in the in the in the twenty two really um but they do have some unbelievable players who who've come down from Exeter who had the likes of um Tommy Wyatt from who played fullback for Exeter uh, Max Nori Hooker uh Rusi who played in, in the second row for Exeter now as well so they they really come in and. They played them some um, some unbelievable rugby for us as well. So, um, and obviously gone and kicked on and played for Exeter then that later that season as well. Um, but it's definitely 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 ex an experience down there. So I'd definitely say that, yeah. But if you're not used to traveling to those type of type of uh, type type of pitches, it's definitely middle of winter. The see the wind coming off the seafront, but it's definitely an eye opener. It's just it's a shame that we don't see much of the championship really because you know it's not on telly or anything, is it? So you don't. No. It's sort of out the way out of mind a little bit, and obviously yeah, like, the bit politics going on there with how they're seen in the English game as well. But you, you feel like it's definitely a product that could be made more of. Oh, hundred percent. Is that is, they play some really good rugby? Use it. There's a split within the league. Obviously, you got I think it's about six of them. I think are professional, and the rest are semi-pro. Then. Um, how they work that um, it, it is difficult and you do see this, the difference in the teams you got your likes of healing they were leading the way um, Cornish Pirates are always up there 
Coventry, you got like your Doncaster, and then you have your other teams, then you got like Colley, which are right up north towards Liverpool. So and as well, there's a lot of travel. Um they say like while well, the money's tight in there where you like the Cornish Pirates when your closest game is Harpery, which is three and a half, four hours, four hours drive is that's your closest game. And then your next one, the other ones are either London, Doncaster. So that you're on a, you're on the bus for a minimum of six hours every other weekend. There's a lot of traveling for players. Um, and like you say, the when the money is tight, it, it does make it difficult. Um, especially when you're trying to compete and with the likes of Ealing, who seem to be bringing in lots of international players and international quality within this within this squad at times as well. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a product where I think they could do could do a lot more with. Um, like you said, like I said, you got a couple of those players who went on and played for Exeter within in that season. I know they trained with them when they were in the academy, but that regular rugby and I think some of the rugby that is played that you is confrontational. But you do see likes of uh Bedford who play some really expansive, wide, fast playing rugby, which. I think when we were done, I think they might put fifty points on us at one point up at up at their place because it was you was playing like we were playing touch rugby against them at one point. <laughs> I wouldn't wouldn't expect anything less from a, a team coached by Mike Ray, of course. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, last summer, then uh, you've made the switch back, coming back to to Pontypridd, stepping out of the pro game. Well, how tough was that decision, and sort of what does life look like for you now uh, coming into the semi pro setup? Yeah, it was it was a bit of a bit of a transition. Um, it was a tough one to take. Um, it was something that I wasn't expecting to do, and it was something I wasn't hoping to do. Um, like I did have my agent hoping to try and find find me something, but the way that his finances are in rugby at the moment is is being quite tight, and obviously those players, the the international players, they pick up. They get picked up first, and then it whittles down into uh, who they can get, who can get the cheapest, and who, for the quality you want as well. So the squads have obviously been cut, and I was hoping to try and come back into Wales if I if I could, um, but or I was trying to find any way possible I could um, pick me up really. Um, but it was, yeah, it was definitely definitely a tough one, which. Probably grateful now that the Ponty had managed to to bring me back and be back home as well, and I've given me opportunities with work and um and actually stepping back and in, uh, picking up a bit of coaching and stuff now and transitioning towards towards that later. I know I'm still only young, I'm still only twenty eight. To like I would have hoped I was still being playing professionally, but obviously that's the that's rugby and that's life and that's life. You, you, there's things you can't control, so I like, don't get me wrong. I'm grateful and really happy that um, the memories and the and uh, what I achieved in my playing career but I think I've got to start looking out for moving to for later in life and for life that I would work outside of rugby and try and transition to what kind of what I want to do later on uh, and stay involved involved with it yeah, so sort of moving moving on to coaching. So you had your first taste of it with um Cardiff and the sixteens and the eighteen nineteen season. So how did that grounding help you with your coaching now? And which players sort of stood out? Uh, although I'm sure we probably could guess um a few of the likes of uh Big Mac, Mason Grady, Cabango, etc. Yeah, so um that year I think uh Bubba actually got me involved with I think it was towards the end of one of the, I can't remember what year it was now. Uh, with a combined, um, and then I think I ended up taking on the role with the attack of the Cardiff South, um, South of the Sixteens. Um, like you said, there was there was a couple of um, a couple of names in there now with uh Big Mac starting out as prop and now moving into the back row and playing number eight. So, um, go like so what was it Louis Hennessy. Uh, who's obviously moved on into Bath now and been outstanding for the twenties. Um, you had Harrison James, who's obviously playing with Cardiff, and so it, it definitely a couple of of names have come through and progressed through. And obviously, Mac has been outstanding. Now he's seen playing for Cardiff. He's definitely definitely filled his frame and looking uh looking a big man now. 
Um, but that's yeah, that, that definitely just started the the itch of really wanting to try to get into um into coaching. Um, so definitely, I've kept my kept my kept my name in there and tried different uh, different things. Where obviously down in Cornwall as well, I did a bit of coaching one of the private schools down there. So as a as a rugby coach. Um, moved back. I've been doing the Ponty schools uh, and sixteens now as well. So definitely keep my uh keep me on my toes as well with the young with the young boys who uh personalities and and whatnot. De definitely a difference between uh the Ponty and Valley boys compared to the uh compared to the Cardiff boys. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and then <laughs> during uh during last season, the opportunity comes up to take on uh, sort of assistant coach duties at a Ponty. Uh, was that a simple decision to say yes? And and what does, how how are you finding that balance between still playing, but coaching at the same time? Yeah, it wasn't, um, wouldn't, it was definitely, easy, it wasn't, it was an easy decision, sorry, um, to take on the role, which I, I wouldn't say it was a coaching role. It was just someone trying to, guide the team and put structures in place for the weekend. And I, to be honest, we didn't, we didn't really change anything. We didn't change anything at all. It was just simply messages. What can I see? What, how can I help the players? Um, I think a lot of the boys actually come together and actually helped each other. You got the likes of experienced players of Joel Wicks, uh, Dale Stuckey, but as well, you had quality with you had the Ryan Wilkins who come through the academy as well, Ben Bonnell who's been down with Cardiff as well. So you had a lot of experienced players there within the back line who were quality players as well, which really did really did help. Um but yeah, and then moving into this year, then the the offer come to to stay on board and with me, uh Christian Park and Dick Amidas heading up as well. So um I did have a think about it. What what did I want to do if I wanted to stay on? Um, and for I think for myself, it was an opportunity I couldn't really turn down. Um, for what I want to try and progress and do it as a in the future, really as a as a job. So it's something I kind of want to stay in rugby, and I hopefully try and working with academies or in the, in a college or something like that. Really, um, so it's definitely given me experience, a lot of learning, and something and that I can put my own stamp on as well, uh, how, how I see the game and how I want to play as well, which, to be fair, is a lot, learned a lot from Jockey from his time down in Cardiff. Um, and I tried to meet I tried to meet up with Fishy and um, see what they do with the academy as well and trying to stay, keep, keep learning as much as possible, really, and progressing. So that's the only way that I think trying to help the players as much as possible and help myself is just constantly learning off those off those people obviously not 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 asking for plays or anything but when with your you know yeah and you still got early on you do but do you sort of have your style of coaching you've mentioned you know how much jockey and fish you've been an influence but you know what's what's sort of your philosophy when you're coaching an attack is it setting it getting structures and play set plays in place or are you more about having individual skills so players can go or is it a, sort yeah, of a mix yeah, it's kind of, kind of mix, I think. So I try to make it as simple as possible for for the the players. I don't really want to overload them too much. Um, so just trying to keep a simple shape and obviously try to be innovative and bring in different plays. It keeps boys uh happy and keeps them excited about what what we bring in this week. What can we do? What are we looking at? Um, but yeah, I'll try and weekly try and keep a shape and. And play is more or less more or less the same, just try and perfect it and allow boys to show off their, their abilities and allow them the freedom to be able to play within that within that structure and not restrict them too much. Um because obviously they if you got someone who can beat players, you want to be able to give it put them in space and allow them uh, allow them out those opportunities. So um I think we we got a, a good group of players now. A lot of a lot of our players did leave. Um, towards the end of the season, which was um a bit of a shame. We were obviously a lot, a lot of us as coaching staff, we, we were gutted. Um, but for those players who were who have moved on, it was kind of an opportunity they couldn't turn down. So a lot of them up were young enough and still hoping to try and pick up 
opportunities to still be professional. They, I think they're only 20, 21 years of age. So um, more or less our, our forward pack has, has stayed and is going to be consistent from, from last year and the year before. Um, so they those boys are picking the things up pretty easy and we've got quite a few youngsters and new faces who come in this, this year now and mainly in the back line. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Going pre season now, trying to get uh all those players up and running and seeing how how they go and how they impress in pre season. Yeah, so just to give the listeners some some context, obviously Pontypridd that we play in still in the Welsh Prem next year. Um, it's a thirteen team league, uh, an interesting mix of teams actually. You got sort of likes of Ponty, Merthyr, Neath. Frosky's Bargoid, you've been at the top level for a, a while on and off last yeah. few years. You've got Cardiff Met, who obviously run a very successful rugby program there. You've got Brecon, who've got a little bit of money behind them with the Chief and Gavin Dacey in charge there. And then a sort of a good mix, good couple of trips in here as well. There's some good local clubs at Bonamine at Swansea, Llangenech in Llethley. I should run those good local derby for Ponty, I'm yeah. sure. Narbeth down west, Newcastle Emlyn as well, Newbridge. Um, and then Player-wise, there's been some interesting signings from Ponty as well. You've got guys who've got a bit of experience at the level. Jacob Symes from Swansea, former Cardiff under-18 fly-off, who's been out, I think he won like the Australian Championship with the Brumbies yeah. in the 90s yeah. or something yeah. as well, didn't he? You've got Stuart Floyd Ellis, who's been at Bregen for a while. Ewan Evans, former Cardiff Academy and RFC Centres, coming back from Cornish Pirates, sort of following yeah. Yeah. who knew around the year behind <laughs> <laughs> And then a, a bunch of lads from local teams, Joe Davis, centre from Clanhara, and uh, Ollie Shepherd, interesting looking character from southeast of England somewhere who's been playing for yeah. USW, I think. Yeah. It's it's sort of an exciting league and exciting team. So is it, is it what's your sort of thoughts on next season and, and how Ponty uh, could go? Yeah, so we, well, as a group, as a coaching group, we're excited. We've got a lot of new, like, not new, lot of new faces. Um. I think it's it's going to be a t- it is going to be a tough league. I think it's going to be very very physical with the likes and for with the forward back of Bargo, Digoy Breck and Murtha was a standard deal, very forward dominant and aggressive up front. Um, local derby with us, I think that's going to be uh, an interesting one. Home home and away, um, and then like you say, a couple of trips down west end, which you know, like to bond of mine, which is. Up on top of a mountain, I tripped down there before and it's freezing cold, windy. And that's gonna be interesting when an eye open up for a few boys, maybe as well. So, yeah, it is. We're hoping the way we're gonna be playing this year is it gonna be an exciting brand of rugby. We're hoping if we can get the weather and get on dry weekends, um, like we have got a massive pack, um, but we got boys who are. Fit to a dynamic who can run it, when they run at space they can make line breaks so we will try and move the ball on that hide away from that that's that's the type of rugby I want to play and all the boys want to play as well and that's that it suits them best um which we're hoping when we take bring those teams to us we can stretch them a little bit more and move their foot forwards around the field and especially on the artificial as well a lot of the teams who've come come up now might not be used to it not used to playing on that track and. You see a lot of boys cramping up early, but then you get to the sixty-minute mark and they gotta make those changes. Um, it's definitely gonna be interesting with the law change as well. We're changing down to the new tackle height from last year, so it's gonna be an adjustment where a lot of those teams who've already had that have been been playing with after the last year or so. So I think it'll be adjustment early on in the start of the season now. So we've really got a big push now leading into those preseason games to actually nail it on and get the boys uh, get away from choking and trying to hold up tackles we actually need, kind of need to be chopping now a lot more so it's going to be an interesting one definitely a physical competition I can see that and uh, there's a, a pre-season game as well uh, I think uh, the rags are coming up to Sardis uh, on the yeah. 24th of August is that going to be the most competitive pre-season friendly in history or I think so I think it's going to, it's going to be an interesting one so we got uh, th- I mean, we got three games before that we got Local Derby with Abercrombie Boy, we got ten be away is a nice little trip down there. Cinderford who have been in that one. Uh so they're coming down to us after going up to them last year and then we got Cardiff up at our place then. So that's gonna be a nice uh nice one to end the preseason and 
hopefully be be an entertaining one. Hopefully you get a good crowd there as well. If, um, obviously not gonna be playing them in within the season, so it should be a good good weekend. Which we're hoping will be a good good brand of rugby played by both sides. Cause I can imagine Fishy putting his uh his standard stamp of expansive playing rugby and so yeah, it'd be hopefully you can get one up on him. <laughs> They, they might not be going well second half and then Fisher can just bring himself on or something yeah, like exactly. that probably. <laughs> <laughs> Won't put it past him to be honest. Uh, Harley, anything more from yourself? Uh, just a, a couple of quick follow ones. So, so, uh, you know, thinking back to all the histories, two of your favourite uh, Bloom Blacks, that A, one that you played with and who someone who you'd have loved to have played with. Who played with? Um... Definitely, my well, the one I played with is playing with Ray all all those years. It's been it's been outstanding and held a servant servant of the club. How he's still going is mental. The the, the guy's a freak, to be honest. Um, but he he works hard. He's a, a silent trainer. He keeps himself quiet and he comes in every season. Oh, I'm I'm not finishing this year, but he does another year. And his body's still in as he's probably in better shape now as when he the when he first come over come over. So. No, nah, he's he's an unbelievable player and been a great servant to the club and can't wait to actually see him playing again this year and trying to catch up with him a few times when uh when I pop down there. Um who'd like to play with? Um probably would have loved to play with Martin Williams. He was probably one as uh growing up, probably watching and um someone I always wanted to kind of be like as a player. I thought I was a flank when I was younger, but Think that my size was was a bit too short for for that, so I ended up going in the centre. So, yeah, that was that was probably a player I would have loved to have played with that yeah, at Cardiff. Thanks. So why you so good? Why you were so good over the ball? To be honest. Yeah. yeah um. <laughs> and then the last, so I said, the last silly question we ask all our guests, uh, courtesy of Liam, Liam Warrender, of uh, sort of off the off the crazy corner with the drums. Uh, what's your favourite biscuit? Biscuit. Oh, go to go be a chocolate digestive. I think. Yeah, yeah I think it's a pretty pretty popular one. Yeah. <laughs> well, Garen, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, it's been great to catch up on your career and uh, and best of luck with uh, Ponty this season and uh, pop up on uh, on August in the preseason. Hopefully, get up a few times during the season as well. Especially, I live quite close to Slangenic, so I might pop over for that away trip. So, uh, but yeah, um, cheers for joining us. Great, thank you very much for having me on. Look forward to seeing you guys up there. Cheers. Uh, we'll be Cheers. back over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've got a few more guests lined up and at some point we'll be reviewing uh, Wales' summer tour or what's left of it after uh, after the next few weeks uh, and looking ahead to the new season with Cardiff. But cheers, Harley. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for listening to the Cardiff Central Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Please subscribe, rate and review wherever you listen to us as it really helps spread the word. You can find us on all the usual social media channels or email us on welshregionalrugbypod at gmail.com. And remember, whatever the question is, rugby is always the answer. Sports Social Podcast Network.